Hello and welcome to this final First Look Exploring session, looking at The Phoenix by Thomas Middleton, the first of his works that uh, that come to us uh, in a chronological order. We've done a few Middletons before. In fact, we've done the last play by Middleton um, uh, and we've done various uh, uh, little pieces in between and some uh, Lord Mayor shows and stuff. Uh, but we're only now starting to seriously engage with his corpus, mm. as it were. Um, uh, and uh, yes, we're going to dive into the, the remaining uh, embers of the phoenix and see whether anything is going to shoot up in, uh, uh, and burst into life uh, from, from, from those ashes. Um, uh, so reading today, uh, The Phoenix and a Gentleman is... Sarah Blake, actor, writer and director in Germany. Reading Prodator, second voice, second suitor, boy and drawer is... Lindsay Beecham, actor in Kirkcaldy, Scotland. Reading First Voice, Falso, Fidelio, Maid and Niece is... Hi, I'm Greg and I literally couldn't remember what I was playing. <laughs> Excellent. Um, there's a lot of people doing first, second, fourth voices and things. Uh, uh, reading First Suitor, First Officer and Katsitsta is... Aliki Chapel, actor and translator, currently in Lancashire. And because we've got quite a lot of doubling going on here that might not actually work in practice, Aliki may randomly be some other people who are being read by other people uh, later on. Uh, reading Jeweler's Wife, Fourth Voice, Quieto, Second Officer and Duke is... Hi, my name's Elizabeth. I'm a Sue and I hail from sunny Essex. And reading Knight, Third Voice, Tangle and Lusurioso is... Alan, a civilian in Suffolk. And I'm your host, Robert Crichton. I will be reading stage directions, and I too might leap into the fray if we get to a scene that is just too jam-packed to make it make any sense. I, I mean, I don't mind people occasionally talking to themselves like uh, uh, in, with silly voices, but if it goes on for any length of time, I will step in. Uh, OK, uh, we're at scene 9. We're going with a running scene count rather than attempting to reconstruct where act breaks might have lived. Um, and we're going to start with the entrance of the knight and jeweler's wife. It stands upon the frame of my reputation, I protest, lady. Lady, that word is worth a hundred angels at all times, for it costs more. If I live till tomorrow night, my sweet pleasure... Thou shalt have them. Could you not make them 150, thank you? I'll do my best to multiply, I assure you. Could you not make them 200? No, by my faith. Please, I'd rather be confined in the 150. Come, e'en as much about this time when taverns give up their ghosts and gentlemen are in their first cast. I'll observe the season. And do but whirl the ring of the door once about. My maidservant shall be taught to understand the language. Enough, my sweet revenue. Good rest, my effectual pleasure. And they exit. Um, enough, my sweet revenue. Good, my good rest, my effectual pleasure. There's, there's a, there's a series of love tokens. <laughs> my sweet revenue. <laughs> Yes, uh, that does suggest that there's an element to the nature of their relationship as well. Um, uh, between uh, Punk and Board uh, seems to be the suggestion there. I, I don't know whether the play technically goes that far, but um, uh, it's it's not un, un, uh, unreasonable within the sort of play world, which is very, very down amongst the stews, kind of, and the, the, the dark crannies of London. Um so this this again feels like one of these setup scenes, like it's going to run into the next and set up what's going on, rather than being a properly distinguished unit of action. If that makes sense, it's setting up a situation. Uh, any thoughts in the room on this this mini scene? Otherwise, we'll probably just crack on and fold this into the logic of what follows after. No, okay, let's get into the world of the play a bit more because uh, I'm sure things are going to happen. Uh, scene 12, enter Prodator, uh, dodgy courtier, and Phoenix. Come hither, Phoenix. What makes your honour break so early? A toy. I have a toy. A toy, my lord? Before thou layest thy wrath upon the duke, be advised. Aye, aye, how warrant you, my lord? Nay, give my words honour, hear me. I'll strive to bring this act into such form and credit amongst men 
they shall suppose, nay, verily believe, the prince his son to be the plotter of his father's murder. Oh, that were infinitely admirable. Were it not, it pleaseth me beyond my bliss. Then, if his son meet death as he returns, or by my hired instruments turn up, the general voice will cry, Oh, happy vengeance! Oh, blessed vengeance! Aye, I'll turn my brain into a thousand uses, tire my inventions, make my blood sick with study, and mine eye more hollow than my heart. But I will fashion, nay, I will fashion it. Canst counterfeit? Prince's hand, most truly, most direct, you shall admire it. Necessary mischief, next to a woman, but more close in secrets. Thou art all the kindred that my breast vouchsafes. Look into me anon, I must frame and muse and fashion. Exit Prodotor. T'was to look into thee, in whose heart treason grows ripe and therefore fit to fall, that slave first sinks whose envy threatens all. Now is his venom at full height. Lying or being in the said country, in the tenure and the occupation foresaid. No, no more then, a, a writ of course upon the matter of... Carnage! Oh, 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 oh yes. Carlo Turbulenzo appear, or lose twenty mark in the suits. Huh? Whither have my thoughts conveyed me? I am now within the dizzy murmur of the law. So that, then, the course be found clear upon the last citation. Carlo Turbulenzo, come into the court. And with this cacophony of voices off, enter Tangle with two suitors after him. Now, 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 now! On my knees I praise Mercury, the god of law. I have two suits at issue. Two suits at issue. Do you hear, sir? I will not hear. I've other business. I beseech you, my learned counsel. Beseech not thee. Beseech not me. I am a mortal man, a client as you are. Beseech not me. I would do all by your worship's direction. Then hang thyself. Shall I take out a special supplicavit? Mad me not, torment me not, tear me not. You'll give me leave to hear mine own cause, mine own cause. Nay, moreover and further. Well said, my lawyer, well said, well said. All the opprobrious speeches that man could invent, all the malicious invectives, called whittle to his face. That's I, that's I. Thank you, my learned counsel, for your good remembrance. I hope I shall overthrow him horse and foot. Nay, but good sir. No more, sir. He that, he that brings me happy news first, I'll relieve first. Sound executions rot thy cause and thee. Exuant suitors. Aye, aye, pray so still, pray so still. They'll thrive the better. I wonder how this fellow keeps up madness. What stuff his brains are made on. I suffer. I suffer till I hear a judgment. What, old signor? Pretty, I will not know thee now. It is a busy time. A busy time with me. What? Not me, signor. Oh, cry thee mercy. Give me thy hand fairly well. It's no relief again me. Then his demurs will not help him. His sussurras will but play the knaves with him. And we're just going to pause there because quite a lot's going on here. Um, uh, in, in a busy old scene. Uh, Tangle is entangled with suitors off and suitors on. Law stuff going on. Um, and the scene seems to start with an <coughs> error. Um, Prodotor comes on and says, come hither, Phoenix. I, I was going to mention that. I thought, uh, is, yes, I mean... He, he doesn't know he's Phoenix. He clearly he doesn't, doesn't know, know who so he is. Presumably Phoenix is his real name and he's going under an assumed name. Mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, uh, so Certainly at the beginning of the play he was called Phoenix by his uncle yeah. you know, father uh, and all that. Uh, Alan. Yeah. yeah, I mean, he, it was one thing that struck me is that the stage direction should have been enter Phoenix disguised. Yes. 
Um, but, the, you know, the, none of the disguisings are uh, noted in our script uh, when they do appear uh, disguised. Are, they're all editorial. Um, they're not in the original. It doesn't go into that level of detail. And, and we've certainly not had any um, false name for him. No. But this I mean, play is short on names anyway, because we've already discussed. We've got niece, we've got knight, all, all of these characters with job descriptions rather than names yeah um yeah very few people actually have given names uh and even the, and when they do have given names they're very nominative deterministic mm. names of you know this is what my character is like uh you know uh, i am a villain says prodotor um basically <laughs> if you know where that's coming from uh, but what we do then get is we get all this lovely business um uh, 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 following that, of all these suitors, and it's just is is Tangle in a tangle? He's 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 tied himself in too many knots. Is that the impression that I'm getting here? That he's got too many law cases going on at mm. once, and he's lost the thread. Because um, you've got all these voices off, and then you've got the suitors on as well. Uh, Aliki. Yeah, it it made me think if it was some kind of a attempt to stage a psychological state. You know, if this is what he's hearing. Mm. practically rather than we are, are we to believe he's outside a courthouse and all of these things just happen to be being said as the lawyer walks by i don't know but it, it felt like it was almost a portrait of a psychological state rather than a, a real situation mm. i suspect it's going to be a bit of both actually um uh, but i like the idea that yeah there's uh, it's 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 uh it's demonstrating exterior and interior uh universes um alan well, we've already established that Tangle is trying to keep so many balls in the air that he's going to end up with a complete balls up. Yeah, I mean, because that 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 is Tangle's position in law is to tie the, tie every suit up in as many bogus. Uh, bits of stoppages that you can do uh, in law, and you know that's a fairly standard uh, uh, practice uh, today. Of you know, just keep so it's sending out bogus countersuits just to tie up your litigant for as long as possible, and that's just as true then as it is now. I mean, that's uh, that's that's a very common um, uh, practice um, of spurious suits as well, just suing someone for the sake of it uh, and just to get rid of you. Just uh, they'll they'll just pay you off. And that's uh, there are certain rogues uh, of the time who basically that was their job. They would find someone they didn't like who had money and then just do a load of spurious suits and, and just try and uh, hope for a payoff. Um, because law was really was an ass then, uh, as, as, as possibly even more so than it is now. Uh, but at least it was slightly more honest about being an ass then, I think. Uh, corruption was built in. Uh, anyway, um, where's Helen when you need the... Uh, <laughs> Um, uh, so yeah, so, uh, and I love the way sort of Tangle goes, ah, oh, hello, uh, you know, Phoenix goes to, hello, Tangle, it's me, and Tangle goes, who are you, no, I don't have time, oh, yes, I do know you, no, I can't use you in any way, um, <laughs> you are not useful to me at this moment in time, um, before other stuff goes on, um, any other thoughts before, uh, we, we travel for. No, nope, no, nope, we've exhausted that. Okay, we have the entrance then of Justice Falso. Justice, tis he. Oh, we have a Justice Falso. Uh, we, we do, ah, sorry. Greg. Have I found thee in faith? I thought that where I should smell the out, old tangle. What, old Senor Justice, huh? Embrace me another time, and you can't possible. How does all thy wives' children? Well, that's well said, if faith. Hear me, old Tangle. Prithee, do not ravish me. Let me go. I must use some of thy counsel first. Sir, I brought him to an exigent. Hark, that's my cause. That's my cause yonder. I twinged him. I twinged him. My niece is stolen away. Ah, oh, get me a no exact oregno quickly. Nay, you must not stay upon it. I'd fain have you gone. A ne exact oregno. All about it, presently, adieu. And falso exits. You seek to catch her justice? She'll catch you. Enter first suitor. A judgment! A judgment! What? 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 Our throne! 
Overthrown! Overthrown! Ah! 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 Enter second suitor. News! 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 The devil, the devil, the devil! Twice Tangle's overthrown! Twice Tangle's overthrown! Hold! Now, old cheater of the law. Pray give me leave to be mad. Thou that hast found such sweet pleasure in the vexation of others. May I not be mad in quiet? Very marrow, very manner to thee to be in law. Very syrup of toads and preserved adders. Thou that hast vexed and beggared the whole parish and made the honest church wardens to go to law with the poor's money. Hear me, but do but hear me. I pronounce a terrible, horrible curse upon you all and wish you to my attorney. See where a premonera comes, a denimus postatum, that most dreadful execution, excommunicato capiendo. There's no bail to be taken. I shall rot in 15 jails, make dice of my bones, and let my counsellor's son play away his father's money with him. May my bones revenge my quarrel. Capies communis. Here, 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 here. Quick, quickly dip your quills in my blood. Off with my skin and write 14 lines of a side. There's an honest constable fellow. He takes but 10 shillings of a bellows member. Mender, here's another deals all with charity. You should give him nothing, only his wife an embroidered petticoat, a gold fringe for a tail, or a border for a head. Oh, Sarah, you shall catch me no more in the spring of your knaveries. And exit Tangle. <coughs> follow, follow him still. A little thing now sets him forward. Exuant suitors. None can accept against him. The man's mad, and privileged by the moon, if he says true. Less madness, tis to speak sin than to do. This wretch that loved before his food, his strife, this punishment falls even with his life. His pleasure was vexation, all his bliss the torment of another. Their hurt, his health, their starved hopes his store. Whoso loves the law dies either mad or poor. Enter Fidelio. <laughs> Say again, Fidelio. A miracle, a miracle! How now, Fidelio? My lord, a miracle. Oh, what is it? I have found one quiet, suffering, and unlawyered man. An opposite, a very contrary to the old turbulent fellow. Why, he's mad. Mad? Why? He's like wit. Could he be madder than he? Sorry, could he be madder than he was? If he be any way out of what he was, tis for the better, my lord. Well, but where's this wonder? Tis coming, my lord. A man so truly a man, so indifferently a creature, using the world in his right nature, but to tread upon one that would not bruise the cowardly, cowardliest enemy to man, the worm, that dares not show his malice till we are dead. Nay, my lord, you will admire his temper. See where he comes. Enter Quieto. I promised your acquaintance, sir. Yon is the gentleman I did commend for temper. Let me embrace you simply, that perfectly and more in heart than hand, let affectation keep at court. Aye, let it. Tis told me you love quiet. Above wealth. I above life. I have been wild and rash, committed many and unnatural crimes, which I have since repented. Twas well spent. I was mad, stark mad, nine years together. I pray, how? Going to law, if faith. It made me mad. With the like frenzy, not an hour since an aged man was struck. Alas, I pity him. <laughs> He's not worth pitying, but twas still his gladness to be at variance. Yet, a man's worth pity. My quiet blood has blessed me with this gift. I've cured some, and if his wits be not too deeply cut, I will essay to help him. Sufferance does teach you pity. Enter Quieto's boy. Oh, master, master, your abominable next neighbour came into the house, being half in drink, and took away your best carpet. Has he it? Alas, sir. 
let him go, trouble him not. Lock the door quietly after him and have a safer care who comes in next. But sir, uh, might I advise you, in such a cause as this, a man might boldly, nay, with conscience, go to law. Oh, I'll give him the table too first. Better endure a fist than a sharp sword. I had rather they should pull off my clothes and flay off my skin and hang that on my enemy's edge. Why, for such Good causes was the law ordained. True, and in itself tis glorious and divine. Law is the very masterpiece of heaven. But see yonder, there's many clouds between the sun and us. There's too much cloth before we see the law. I'm content with that answer. Be mild still. Tis honour to forgive those you could kill. There do I keep. Reach me your hand. I love you, and you shall know me better. Tis my suit. Oh, the night grows deep, and... And enter two officers. Oh, who's lucky to be officers? Uh, it's, me. Officer. it's me, I'll just... Uh, there we go. <clears throat> Come away. This way. This way. Who be those? Stand close a little. And as they retire, Phoenix uh, jars the ring of the jeweler's door. The maid enters and catches him. Come, as well as ever you came in your knife. My master's now gone to bed. Give me your nightly hand. I must lead you into the blind parlour. My mistress will be down presently. Takes in Phoenix, amazed. I tell you, our safest course will be to arrest him when he comes out of the tavern, for then he'll be half drunk and will not stand upon his weapon. Our safest course indeed, for he will draw. But he will, though he put it up again, which is more of his courtesy than our deserving. Exit officers. The world is nothing but vexation, spite and uncharitable action. Did you see the gentleman? Not I. Well, should he be? It's it may he's passed by. Uh, good sir, let's overtake him. Exuant. Oh, this is a complicated little bit of business, isn't it? So we have the setup from the previous scene where I said, you know, let's not talk about it too much because it, it's clearly set up um, for for uh, uh, assignation time. <laughs> and Phoenix has just been yoinked uh, off stage. <laughs> just going, what the hell's going on? Um, which is, I, I really like because it actually, even though it has been set up for once, Middleton has set this up um properly and uh, but it and it sort of comes out but it still comes out of nowhere because you're in the middle of this other stuff that's going on um and tangle has really entangled himself and i love the way he just goes pray give me leave to be mad i you know don't, don't talk to me i'd like to go mad for a bit uh thank you very much it's an early modern play i i get to do these things uh and then he does his mad potentially mad speech um but yeah he is he is overthrown um and uh, and 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 utterly uh, utterly undone, and then we get this 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 mo and, and you know we've got all this stuff going on, uh, you know, Falso running on, going, you know, what, what Minis is gone, Minis is gone, and they're of course going, oh yeah, well we set that up earlier, and 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 all this stuff going, and then we get this quieto se sequence. It's just doing really different, other interesting things, thoughts, thoughts in the room. This 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 scene is throwing. All sorts of stuff at us, and I'm I'm liking it. I'm liking it. It's a different mix. This one. Um, I'm not quite sure what's going on with the officers yet. Um, I, I got a bit confused, but I don't care. Uh, Lindsay. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with the officers. Um, if this is anything to do with Quieto's carpet or anything like that, but um, yeah, I just thought it, it's really interesting having this character introduced at this point in the play when when sort of everything's at such a pitch and you can imagine in full performance the the sort of hysteria and histrionics and all the dueling that happened between Tangle and Falso in the bit that we looked at last time and it was just all sort of it, it's just all such craziness and then this sort of character comes on who's who's the exact antithesis of all of that and I just thought it was so interesting. It's like the the sort of small center that you, that you need to kind of bring this world of craziness back into the balance before the end of the play. I guess so. 
Yeah, it's like the potter's wheel has wandered on. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's like we just have this little, this little soothing, soothing moment in in the middle of all this. Um, who all, uh, uh, which then you know, I say punctuated by this this additional. Uh, moment with the officers and then phoenix being yoinked off and 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 all of that i mean it's it's working i mean it's 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 got to be there's a lot of work i think made to make this work but it is working um uh in in ways that sometimes some of the earlier stuff we've been a little more question or i've been more questionable about um other thoughts sarah yes i mean um Sticking with my Vanity Fair metaphor that I came up with in, in the previous session, um, this is like a medley of, of life. And it's so far, it's been slewed very heavily towards the more nefarious side of life. Um, you know, and, and the characters that aren't out and out nefarious all tend to be related to Phoenix. Um you know, Fidelio is his friend. The niece is betrothed to Fidelio. Um, and they're about the only ones, actually, <laughs> who who aren't like, you know, not just a bit dodgy, but deeply, deeply nefarious. I mean, OK, I suppose you could say Tangle isn't isn't quite as awful as the others, but he's still pretty awful because, yeah, you know, he he's done all he's, he's practiced all sorts of um, horrendous um and corrupt practices. So yeah, he is actually pretty awful. He's gone mad now, so he's more kind of entertaining. But I mean, he was fairly nefarious early on. And then you've got the awful uh, justice. Uh, you've got Predator. Y you know, you've got all these characters who are up to no good. And I wonder if Quieto is just um, he's there for maybe a bit of balance. It's like he's because he is someone who isn't. He's not part of Phoenix's entourage. Um, okay, Fidelio has found him, but. He's, he's just sort of, he seems to have just picked him up somewhere. He seems to have found him. And it's like, ah, actually, here is the one character in the play who shows us that the law isn't always an ass and that not everybody is corrupt. And he, he, he maybe just helps to restore a bit of balance. I think it's interesting that he's introduced immediately after that, that mad scene, you know, because everybody is there, like, worked up to such a pitch. Um yeah, I th I think maybe it's it's the playwright saying, well, okay, most people are ghastly, but yeah, no, here's one that isn't. Mm. And we'll see whether we get more from Quieto later. Alan, and then Elizabeth. I, I think actually I differ from that slightly because I think the telling bit for me in Quieto's speech was when he's told that his carpet's been nicked. Oh, God, no, I'm not going to law. That will just drive you mad because the laws are all crooks and it feels very much in the continuity of what we've seen over the previous sessions of uh, Middleton having a good hack at lawyers on every conceivable occasion. Uh, Elizabeth? Yeah um, I liked Quieto I felt like he gave a little bit of comic relief in this there's a moment where he's lost his carpet and you uh, there was a moment where we were all waiting to see what he would say and he was like, oh, just shut the door and make sure that you're careful who comes in next. And I thought that was really funny. And mm. then there was there was also the bit where he talks about, like, people are saying, oh, that's what the law's for, though, to stop things like that from happening or to give you recompense. And then Quieto says something along the lines of, oh, why would I give my clothes when I could be flayed? So, and I just thought that that was just an interesting analogy. So he's philosophizing. And he's also, I feel like he's funny, but he also has these really intelligent things to say. Mm. So I just thought he was just an interesting character that just turned up out of nowhere. Mm. I'm, yeah, a lot of love for Quieto. Um, okay, let's uh, find out what happened to Phoenix, having been yoinked off at the end of scene 12. <laughs> scene 13. Um, apparently earlier in the video, I said the wrong scene numbers. So, you know, apologies for that. I, 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 I I didn't pick up on it at all, but uh, we started at scene 11, uh, honest. Uh, and we're now on scene 13. Enter Phoenix with the maid. Oh, sir, now you are there, sir. She'll come to you instantly. I must not stay. My mistress <laughs> would be jealous. You must do nothing to me. My mistress would find it 
<laughs> Exit made. Whither am I led? Brought in by the hand. Oh, I hope it can be no harm to stay for a woman, although indeed they were never more dangerous. I have ventured hitherto and safe, and I now must venture to stay now. This should be a fair room, but I see it not. The blind parlour calls it she. Enter the jeweller's wife. Where art thou, O oh my knight? Your knight? Uh, I am the duke's knight. I say you're my, my knight, for I'm sure I paid for you. Paid for you? Hmm. His foot. <gasps> a light. Snatches in a light and extinguishes it. Now out upon the marmoset. Hast thou served me so long? And offer to bring in a candle. Fair room, villainous face, and worse woman. I have learnt something by a glimpse of the candle. How happened it you came so soon? I looked not for you these two hours. Yet as the sweet chance is, you came as well as a thing could come. For my husband's newly brought a bed. And what has Jove sent him? He ne'er sent him anything since I knew him. He's a man of a bad nature to his wife. None but his maids can thrive under him. Oh, that's upon him. I judge whether I have a cause to be a courtesan or no, to do as I do. An elderly fellow, as he is, if he were married to a young virgin, he were able to break her heart, though he could break nothing else. Here, here, there's just a hundred and fifty. But I stole them so hardly from him, t'would e'en have grieved you to have seen it. So twould, if faith. Therefore, prithee, my sweet pleasure, do not keep company so much. How do you think I am able to maintain you? Though I be a jeweller's wife, jewels are like women. They rise and fall. We must be content to lose sometimes to gain often. But you're content always to lose and never to gain. What need you ride with a footman for you? Oh, uh, that's the grace. The grace? Tis sufficient grace that you've a horse to ride upon. You should think thus with yourself every time you go to bed. If my head were laid, what would become of that horse? He would run a bad race then, as well as his master. Uh, nay, and you give me money to chide me. No, if it were as much more, I would think it foul scorn to chide you. I advise you to be thrifty, to take the time now while you have it. You shall seldom get a nut such another fool as I am, I warrant you. Why, there's Matresa Ariola, keeps her love with half of the cost that I am at. Her friend can go afoot like a good husband, walk in worsted stockings, and inquire for the sixpenny ordinary. Fox on it. Uh, and would you have me so base? No, I would not have you so base, neither. But now and then, when you keep your chamber, you might let your footman out for eight pence a day. A great relief at year's end, I can tell you. The age must needs be foul when vice reforms it. Nay, I have a greater quarrel to you yet. Uh, if faith, what is't? You made me believe at first the prince had you in great estimation and would not offer to travel without you. Nay, that he could not travel without your discretion, direction and intelligence. I'm sorry I said so, if I, uh, but sure I was overflown when I spoke it. I could ne'er have said it else. Nay more. You swore to me that you were the first that taught him to ride a great horse and tread the ring with agility. Uh, by my troth, I must needs confess I swore a great lie in that. And I was a villain to do it, for I could ne'er ride a great horse in my life. Why, lo? Who would love you now but a citizen's wife? So inconstant, so forsworn. You say women are false creatures, but take away men and they'd be honester than you. Nay, last of all, which offends me most of all, you told me you could countenance me at court, and you know we esteem a friend there more worth than a husband here. Uh, what I spake of that, lady, I'll maintain. You maintain? You seen a court? Why, by this diamond. 
Oh, take heed. You cannot have that. Tis always in the eye of my husband. I protest I will not keep it, but only use it for this virtue, as a token to fetch you and approve my power, where you shall not only be received, but made known to the best and chiefest. Oh, are you true? Let me lose my revenue else. That's you word indeed. And upon that condition, take it, this kiss, and my love forever. Gives Phoenix the diamond and kisses him. Oh, enough! Give me thy hand, I'll lead thee forth. I'm sick of all professions, my thoughts burn. He travels best that knows when to return. And exit. Convenient darkness so that people don't recognise people who they're supposed to be moderately intimate with. Yes, having arranged this assignation, it's the wrong guy! And there's all sorts of um, exchanges that are supposed to be going on and um, they don't quite go according to plan. Um, uh, this, this may or may not get more explication later on because as usual with Middleton, uh, they're... <laughs> There are a lot of wheels turning here. He hasn't fully explained to the audience yet. <laughs> I, I, I'm definitely going, this is just something that Middleton does. And it's it's a deliberate thing he's doing. He's doing it for a reason. It's a very interesting effect. I, 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 but I find it very odd. It's really weird. Um, Sarah. Well, I mean, I don't know that, I mean... All that's come out of that scene is that he has now got this diamond and he's like, all right, I will use this as a token to present you at court and introduce you to the chiefest, who I assume he means, by which I assume he means his father. So he, they've set it up that he's going to summon her to court. Um, but beyond that, I just found that, I found that like a really little entertaining scene in itself because I assume mm. through all those long speeches, especially early on but before the diamond bit, um, when the jeweler's wife has all those speeches, I assume in the dark, she's just sort of reaching for him and grabbing him and groping him. And the whole thing is done like with masses of innuendo. And he's just like, no, no, get get off me. And she's like, oh, you know, mm -hmm. when she's talking about all various things. Um, and I don't know. I just think, you know, it's, it's, it's not an original um, thought, but it's very entertaining when, when done well. And I, um, I assume, yeah, that's what we were getting there, like a sort of, um, like her her assuming that he is the knight and her seducing him and him like, I, yeah. I mean, I don't know why he doesn't say who, well, no, because he's in disguise, of course. He doesn't want to blow his cover. So, mm. yeah, he just goes with it. Yeah, it's just one of those, he's no idea what's going on, the young lad. I don't think he understands this universe fully. Um, he's not a, he's not a mere mortal, remember? He's the son of a duke. Uh, so, yeah, uh, all sorts of uh, business. And say, uh, it's all going to get entangled further uh, in a moment. Uh, that, that's, uh, uh, yeah. Um, we may understand why the officers are here in a minute. Um, uh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> so, and why exchanges of money might be important. Uh, anyway, Elizabeth. Um, this last scene just endeared Phoenix to me somewhat. I just was think thinking that he is rather, either much more intelligent than he lets on, or just very, very good at going with the flow. Because she does, she does, um, the jeweler's wife does tr almost try and trick him into like almost like into, into saying something that would implicate him, but he doesn't fall for it. And I like that. I just, I know it's a very like often used comedic trope of like, you not knowing who someone is in the dark, but he does see her for a moment in the light. So he doesn't know who she is, but she doesn't seem to have grasped who he is. Mm. And I like that. I just, I think that there's some, some complexity in that trope. I, I thought it was fun. Yeah, because there is an interesting question of how how the business of him going for a candle and she's sort of knocking it out or however that works. It, we don't have a proper stage direction. We've got a couple of inferred stage directions, but there's different emphasis on how it actually functions. So, yeah, uh, you've got to make it that he, he vaguely knows who she is, but she mustn't know who he is. Um, you know, you'd think the recognised voices, wouldn't you? But never mind. Um, Hey-ho. Uh 
disguises that they're, they're, they're always perfect <laughs> um anyway we will move on or rather outside scene 14 enter knight and two officers after him adieu farewell to bed you i to my city sweet city bird my precious revenue the very thought of 150 angels increases oil and spirit ho i arrest you sir oh you have made us wait a goodly time for you, have you not? Thank you. You're in your trousers and mull wines. Pox on you. And you have no care for poor officers staying for you. I drunk but one health, I protest. I could void it now. But whose suit, I pray? <laughs> the suit of him that makes suits, your tailor. Why, you make me the, the last. This, this that I wear. Argo, nay, we have been scholars, I can tell you we could not have been knaves so soon else. For as that notable, as in that notable city called London stand, two most famous universities, Poultry and Wood Street, where some are of 20 years standing and have took all their degrees from the master's side down to the mistress's side, the whole so in like manner... Come, come, come. I'd quite forgot the 150 angels. Slig, where be they? I'll bring you to the size of them presently. A notable lad, and worthy to be arrested. We'll have but ten for waiting, and then thou shalt choose whether thou wilt run away from us or we from thee. No match at running. Come, come, follow me. Nay, fear not that. Peace, you may happen to see toys, but... Do not see them. Ha! That's the door. This? And knocks. Sort officer, you're spoiled all already. Why? Why? You shall see. You should but have whirled the ring once about. And there's a maid sort servant brought up to understand it. There's a door. All's well again. Psst, tis I, tis I. You? What are you? Oh, where's thy mistress? What of her? Tell her one. She knows who. Her pleasure's here, say. Her pleasure? <laughs> My mistress scorns to be without her pleasure at this time of night. Is she so void of friends, think you? Take that for thinking, sir. Gives him a box on the air and shuts the door. The 150 angels are locked up in a box. We shall not see them tonight. How's this? Am I used like a hundred pound, gentlemen? Damn me, if ever I be a pleasure again. Well, I must to prison. Go prepare his room. There's no remedy. I'll bring him along. He's tame enough now. Exit second officer. Sure, my tailor presumed to use me in this sort. He steals, and I must lie in prison for it. Come, come away, sir. Enter a gentleman with a drawer. Thou sure thou sawest him arrested, drawer? If mine eyes be sober. And that's a question. Mass, here he goes. He shall not go to prison. I have a trick shall bail him. Away! Exit drawer. The gentleman puts his hands over the officer's eyes, uh, uh, hoodwinks him in some fashion, while the knight escapes. Oh! Guess! Guess who I, am I? Who am who I? Who the devil are you? Uh, I'll let go! Box on you! Who are you? Lost my prisoner. Prisoner? Why, I've mistook! I cry you heartily, mercy! I have done you infinite injury on my troth! I took you to be an honest man. Oh, where were your eyes? Could you not see I was an officer? Stop! 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 <laughs> Everyone exits. Okay, so again, there's quite a lot of random action going on here, but I, I'm liking it. So, um, you know, the knight was expecting to turn up at the lady and collect money. Uh, the jewel, as it were, and hence the fact the officers were lying in wait because he's uh, he's got debts uh, for clothes and things. Um, so all of this sort of situation is 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 mulling around, and I love the corruption of the first officer. <laughs> I just love the way he's going. Oh, 150, is it? All right, so give us 10, well, and we'll let you run away uh, while we look in the opposite direction. Thank you very much. 
This is how <laughs> the law works. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, we are very badly paid, and we like to get drunk. Um, <laughs> uh, so, yeah, there's there's all that. We get physical violence from the maid. Uh, Greg, you're enjoying that far too much. And, um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and But then we get the randomness of the gentleman in the drawer helping him escape by hoodwinking. And uh, by a random coincidence at the time of recording, we've, we've actually done quite a few plays where random hoodwinking goes on, where someone throws something over someone's eyes and goes, no, I guess who? Um, and, and so this is this is very much of, 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 uh, of, of just... And it's pure coincidence, not even text from the same period. Uh, so, yeah, there's a lot of it about... Um, um, just, just saying, um, and it's just so random. It's just like, well, we need him to be free, presumably, for some action later on. So just random thing happens, and well, it's sort of cheap, but it was quite fun. <laughs> so I don't care. Uh, thoughts, thoughts. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really enjoying it. Even if I say it's sort of like. Yeah, we didn't know who the officers were waiting for earlier, but we know now. Uh, Sarah. So, I just remember yesterday, I have a I have a hazy recollection of the jeweler's wife and the knight in their many interminable conversations. Like they had a whole they had a whole whole conversation at one point about him being a gentleman or a knight or 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 not being a gentleman, but being a knight, or vice versa. And there was a whole load of stuff with with a gentleman. And I'm wondering if that was the setup for this in some way. Like, did he did he actually talk about knowing a gentleman? I think perhaps he did. Um there was like lots of talk about being gentle and gentility and not and not being a knight and all, all that jazz. And I'm I am i am just I I'm just not entirely sure whether that was setting up this scene we've just had or whether this scene just is completely random with this 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 just dude just showing up out of nowhere and just doing this we have had lots of setup it's just been slightly befuddled uh, i mean all the stuff about um status uh, there's a game with this with uh, with falso uh, earlier um because that was that was a conversation with falso about you know there was this wonderful passive aggressive exchange that went on but we've had with falso uh the jeweler's wife and the knight because they're all slightly related uh and of course we but we haven't met some of these relations because of course we don't we've never met the jeweler and the knight is his brother so i think that's 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 it so uh, but the 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 setup of this liaison was set up by falso and that was rumbling in those earlier scenes, but we didn't understand what was going on when we were reading them. And it's only now we've got to this scene, we know what's going on. Um, so it has been explicated, but in a way that was quite opaque um, uh, in stuff. I think Alan was going to say some of that uh, there, but uh, uh, if you have additional, do say. Well, I, I must admit, I'm just wondering whether the three servants of um, Falso um, I must admit, I keep thinking of as fat, so um, <laughs> are sort of implicated in this somewhere as well. But, well, they haven't visually been there. They seem to have only functioned for their one scene that they mm. had earlier. Um, but I think in a production, if we've got enough bodies, I would like to see, because I think, it was, was it Sarah was talking about this sort of presenting the world and all the, the little entourages that we have here? Uh, would be really fun to to do more of that world building because the world here I think is almost more important than the plot. I think the world of the characters is more important than the plot because I think you just have to let the audience or, or find a way to make sure the audience just enjoys the stuff that the, the fact that things sort of just randomly quite happen and they all slot into different directions and you know it's like the niece has escaped from Falso it was mentioned in passing but actually we haven't seen any of that. None of that's been done. It's just happened between scenes. Um, and, and nothing more has happened on that front at all. Um, and, you know, what's happening with Tangle? So it's like we just keep getting these little slices of action and there's no time to actually set up why they're happening. Um, it gets explicated at some point. Um, uh, and it, it, it's a really interesting way of structuring a play. I, I'm really curious to see how well it, f it flows in performance with, you know, proper rehearsal and, and, and setting these things in motion. I'm really curious about this as a, as a technique. I'm talking a lot. 
Stop me. Someone. Wave. Lindsay! Um, just a quick question about the start of the next scene. We do have, um, we do have the Predator calling Phoenix by, by his name. Mm. Should that be changed to Sir or something? You know, again, it's, it, I, I, well, in performance, yes, unless we establish mm. that Phoenix is his fake name and that mm. he actually has another name. Mm. Um, it would make sense if it was a fake name, but I'm fairly certain I'm, I'm, I'm going to skip back to Act One, uh, the first scene rather, uh, mm. later on and see see if we establish names um, at all, because it's either a weird error or or here or weird error earlier. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but it's a really good point yeah um we, we once again we're about to have prodder to come on and say hello phoenix <laughs> you're not supposed to know who he is uh, okay um we have all I, I think we've discussed this outside of the room but uh there, there are lots of textual issues with the text that's come down to us not actually editorial on our uh, part just just we don't this this text is not very detailed uh in various ways so there may be there may be things that we don't have here uh, or just strange things happened in the journey. Anyway, let's go on to scene 15 and stop me from saying words. Scene 15, enter Prodator and Phoenix. Now, Phoenix. Now, my lord. Let princely blood nourish our hopes. We bring confusion now. A terrible sudden blow. Aye, what day is this hangs over us? By the mass, Monday. As I could wish, my purpose will thrive best. "'Twas first my birthday, now my fortune's day. "'I see whom fate will raise needs never pray. "'Never. "'How is the air?' "'Oh, full of trouble. "'Does not the sky look piteously black? "'As if twere hung with rich men's consciences. "'Ah, stuck not a comet like a carbuncle "'upon the dreadful brow of twelve last night?' Twelve? Uh, no, it was about one. About one? Most proper, for that's the duke. Well shifted from thyself. I could have wished it between one and two, his son and him. I'll give you comfort then. Prithee. There was a villainous raven seen last night over the presence chamber in hard jostle with a young eaglet. A raven? That was I. What did the raven? Marry, my lord, the raven, to say truth, I left the combat doubtful. Mm, so tis still, for all is doubt till the deed crown the will. Now bless thy loins with freedom, wealth, and honour. Think all thy seed young lords, and by this act make a foot-clothed posterity. Now imagine thou seest thy daughters with their trains borne up, whom else despised want may curse to whoredom and public shames, which our state never threat. She is never lewd that is accounted great. I'll alter that court axiom, thus renewed. She's never great that is accounted lewd. Enter several nobles. Stand close, the presence fills. Here, here the place. And at his rising, let his fall be base beneath thy foot. How for his guard, my lord? My gold and fear keep with the chief of them. That's rarely well. And hides behind the presence chair. Bold, heedless slave that dares attempt a deed which shall in pieces rend him. Enter Lusurioso uh, and Infesto. My lords, both. The happiness of the day. I'm my returning. Treasons have still the worst, yet still are spurning. And enter the Duke, at last attended. The Duke! I ne'er was gladder to behold him. Long, Long live, live your, grace. your grace! I do not like that strain. You know my aid affords not to live long. Spoke truer than you think for. Bestow that wish upon the Prince, our son. Nay, he's not to live long neither. Him is the wealthy treasure of our hopes, you as possession of our present comfort. Both in one heart we reverence in one. Oh, reason of a good complexion. There's a winding of a horn. Enter Fidelio. How now? 
What fresh and news fills the court's air? The daily o. Glad tidings to your grace. The prince is safe returned in your court. Ah, oh, joy breaks the ties. The prince is come. Soul quickening news. Pale vengeance to my blood. By me presenting to your serious view a brief of all his travels. And delivers a paper. Tis most welcome. It shall be dear and precious to our eye. He reads. I'm glad he reads. Now take thy opportunity. Leave that place. Tis first rising. Let his fall be base. Oh, that must be altered now. Which? His rising or his fall? Art thou dull now? Thou hearst the prince is come. What's here? My lord. I have got such a large portion of knowledge, most worthy father, by the benefit of my travel. And so he has, no doubt, my lord. That I am bold now to warn you of Lord Proditor's insolent treason who has irreligiously seduced a fellow and closely conveyed him in in the presence chair to murder you. At which point Phoenix steps out and drops his dagger. Oh, guilty, guilty. What was that fell? What's he? I am the man. Oh, slave. I have no power to strike. I'm gone, I'm gone. Let me admire heaven's wisdom in my son. I confess it. He hired me. This is a slave. Tis forged against mine honour and my life. For in what part of reason can it appear? The prince being travelled should know treasons here. Plain counterfeit. Dost thou make false our son? I know the prince will not affirm it. He can and will, my lord. Most just he may. A guard. We cannot but in loyal zeal ourselves lay hands on such a villain. And attendants secure a uh, proditor. Stay you. I found you here too. Us, my lord? Against Lusso Rioso and Infesto, who not only most riotously consume their houses in vicious gaming, mortgaging their livings to the merchant, whereby he with his heirs enter upon their lands, from whence this abuse comes, that in short time the son of the merchant has more lordships than the son of the nobleman, which else was never born to inheritance. But that which is more impious, they most adulterously train out young ladies to midnight banquets, to the utter defamation of their own honours and ridiculous abuse of their husbands. How could the prince hear that? Most true, my lord. Uh, my conscience is a witness against itself, for to that execution of chaste honour I was both hired and led. I hope the prince out of his piteous wisdom will not give wrong to us. As for this fellow, he's poor and cares not to be desperate. And we'll pause there before more people come on stage, which is where the doubling probably all starts falling apart. Um, so, yes, Duke's... Duke's... Uh, uh, here in attendance, Proditors uh, hired Phoenix to do the stabby stabbiness. But Phoenix, of course, has written a letter uh, for, to Daddy um, and uh, to to show to the world the terrible things that that are going on here. And uh, he hasn't revealed himself yet, though, has he? No. We had fake beards earlier. I'm wondering whether. Phoenix should have a fake beard. I, d I don't know. I don't know what the dis the, the dis what is his disguise. Um, you know, he can't just put on a pair of glasses. We 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 are you know we are so over that. Um, as 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 a <laughs> as a thing. Um, but yeah. Um, bad people are getting some bad bad stick going on here. Um, and yeah. Uh, thoughts in the room. Uh, before we continue with the uh, the denouement. Uh, which is, I think, fair to say that we're 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 right in the middle of it. We're in the middle of the denouement, uh, Elizabeth. I was thinking, how often is it that we get a letter <laughs> that that you know that um, that resolves all of the the mysteries of the play? Usually, it's some sort of servant or some sort of character in disguise that says that kind of says things. But this time, we had a letter, and I thought that was interesting. Hmm. 
Yeah, and, and you know, it's a long letter. Duke gets to read it all out and everyone gets to react. And oh, no, really? I, I mean, you know, the, all of this stuff. And we've got various characters who only really appeared at the very beginning of the play <laughs> and then sort of ducked out all these courtiers. Uh, L- La Surioso uh, hasn't really been about. And uh, Infesto, I don't think, says anything during this scene. And he just stands there looking sad. Um, uh, I, I, uh, and in fact, I don't even know for certain he's definitely in the room. Um uh so yeah it's 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 interesting at that that point the way that that that's functioning and and but yeah just talking about you know they they most adulterously train out young ladies to midnight banquets i mean uh i'm not saying there are any more modern parallels with what uh, uh, what, uh elite members of society might be doing behind closed doors but um some some legal cases are still pending uh so um uh, yeah uh, other thoughts no. Okay. Let us go on then for at this moment. Enter Justice. Justice. Justice Falso comes into the room. Justice, my lord. I have my niece stolen from me. She's left her diary with me. She's gone. I'd rather have had her love than her money. I. This is this. This is one of them. Justice, my lord. I know him by his face. This is the thief. Your grace may now to milder sense perceive the wrong done to us by this impudent wretch who has his hand fixed at the throat of law and therefore durst be desperate of his life. Thief, you're too foul, your crime is in excess. One spot of him makes not your ulcers less. Oh. Did your violence force away his niece? Uh, no, my good lord, I'll still confess what's truth. I did remove her from her many wrongs, which she was pleased to leave. They were so vile. What are you named? Falso, my lord, Justice Falso. I'm known by that name. Falso, you came fitly. You are the very next that follows him. I hope so, my lord. My name is in all the records. I can assure your good grace. And, en- en- and enter uh, niece and Kastitsa behind. Against justice also. Ah! Who, having had the honest charge of his niece committed to his trust by the last will and testament of her deceased father and with her all the power of his wealth, not only against faith and conscience detains her dowry, but against nature and humanity essays to abuse her body. Mm -hmm. I'm present to affirm it, my loved lord. Hey, how? What went I hear? Either I must have grieved and loathed lust or despise it, but beggary. Are you the plaintiff here? My, my good lord, for faults were better. Seldom comes a worse. And moreover, not contained in this vice only, which is odious too much, but against the sacred use of justice, maintains three thieves to his men. Cuts me. Who only take purses in their master's liberty, where if any one chance to be taken, he appears before him in a false beard, and one of his fellows, own fellows, takes his examination. Oh, my truth, as true can be, but he shall not know on it. And in the end, will execute justice so cruelly upon him that he will not trust him in a prison, but commit him to his fellows' his chamber. Can a man do nothing in the country but his torn a court? There's some busy informing knave of broad on my life. That this is true, and these and more, my lord, be it under pardon spoken for mine own. He, the disease of justice, these of honour, and this of loyalty and reverence, the unswept venom of the palace. Slave, behold, the prince to approve it. And the phoenix discovers himself. Oh, where? Your eyes keep with your actions. Both look wrong. An infernal to my spirit. My, my lord, lord, my lord, the prince. 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 Tread me to dust, thou in whom wonder keeps. Behold, the serpent on his belly creeps. Rankle not my foot. 
Away! Treason! We laugh at thy vain labouring stings. Above the foot thou hast no power, O kings. I cannot with sufficient joy receive thee, and yet my joy is too much. My royal father, to whose unnatural murder I was hired, I thought it a more natural course of travel and answering future expectation to leave far countries and inquire mine own. To thee let reverence all her powers engage, that art in youth a miracle to age. State is but blindness, thou hadst piercing art. We only saw the knee, but thou the heart. To thee then power and dukedom we resign. He's fit to reign whose knowledge can refine. Forbid it, my obedience. Our words not vain. I know thee wise. Canst both obey and reign. The rest of life we dedicate to heaven. Happy and safe A reign, happy and safe duke. reign to our duke. New duke. Uh, without your prayers, safer and happier. Uh, uh, Fidelio. My royal lord. Here, take this diamond. You know the virtue on it. It can fetch vice. Uh, Madame Castiza? She attends, my lord. Exit Fidelio. Uh, place a guard near us. Uh, know you yon fellow lady? My honour's evil. Torment again! So ugly are thy crimes, thine eye cannot endure them. And that thy face may stand perpetually turned so from ours and thy abhorred self, neither to threaten rack of state or credit, an everlasting banishment seize on thee. O oh, fiend! Thy life is such it is too bad to end. May thy rule, life, and all that's in thee glad have as short time as thy begetting had. Away! My curse is idle. Exit Prodotor. The rest are under reformation, and therefore under pardon. Our duty our shall duty turn shall edge unto our crimes. Lord, I was afraid of nothing but that for my fees and a board, I should have turned to be an innkeeper. But we'll pause before other people come on. Um, but yes, we're, we're definitely into the let's tidy up all the loose ends stuff. Um, you know, it could... Uh, it, it's always difficult in this sense when all the good people win that, you know, you're supposed to be rooting for them. But sometimes they get a little censorious. I'm enjoying this one, though. I'm I'm enjoying uh, Phoenix's reveal um, and the general down down with the bad people. I, I like the fact that you said, I, yeah, I will make you juke. I'm I'm off uh, to written. No, I don't do that. No, no, no. It's fine. It's cool. I, I don't want to do the paperwork. Um <laughs> He doesn't say that, but he should. Um, it's just uh, so, yeah. And, and it does now feel like the conclusion of a morality play. Um, but you know, it's not like we've had one of those awful, egregious ones where uh, they resolve everything in a way where we're sitting there going, "Yeah, but no." Whereas actually, no. So far, fine, <laughs> fine. This is fine. Bad people are getting bad things happening to them. Good people are not being a total ass. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm. I'm pleased. Uh, other thoughts? Uh, Lindsay? Yes, so the Prodotor basically doesn't, apart from being banished, doesn't really get much of a punishment or a chastisement. Seems to get off quite lightly. I mean, obviously I know banished, but I mean, hello. It is true. He did try a murder plot of the of the Duke. I mean, yeah. I, I, I'm thinking back to sort of you know the period that's usually death isn't it it's yeah usually very deathy yeah it's quite deathy and and of course there was the subplot with um uh Castaza as mm. well so it's yes it's basically you know but maybe go it's and just... sin somewhere else <laughs> maybe because maybe it's a comedy because i think i've decided it's a comedy now i think uh, we've got okay. to the point where we can't say it's a trick you can't actually kill people if mm. if you're going to have this kind of resolution, it's just going to have to be banishment uh, mm. and or strange, ironic punishment division stuff, you know. Um, but yeah, yeah. I mean, hell, you know, could kill him. Uh, we could we could make that adjustment. We've done it before, uh, Sarah. I t t talking of the strange and unusual punishments. I did like Falso's last line there before we stop the scene. 
about how he was he was he was frightened that because of his thievery and baldry, he'd have to become an innkeeper. It's like, oh no, not an innkeeper. <laughs> like, feel- where did that come from? I, I, I suspect. Well, innkeepers don't always have a particularly good reputation for the period, and uh, I, I, I don't know whether it's like today, where you know, x out of ten pubs fail. Um, I, I wonder whether it's that kind of logic, and uh, or yeah. not. But that's, that's it is an interesting line. I do like that one, <laughs> unless it is one of those reverse logic things that we've had before, where it's like, oh no. Uh, uh, oh, don't send me to the comfy, yeah. comfy room with the the wine and biscuits. No. Um, <laughs> so maybe he's trying his own trick again. Um, okay, we still have people to to deal with, so let's deal with them. Uh, enter the jeweler's wife midway through Falso's uh, ch- uh, conversation with Fidelio. My daughter, I am ashamed her worship should see me. Who would not love a friend at court? What fine galleries and rooms am I brought through? I had thought my knight have shown his face here, I. Now, mother of pride and daughter of lust, which is your friend now? Oh, me! I'm sure you are not so unprovided to be without a friend here. You'll pay enough for him first. This is the worst room that ever I came in. I am your servant, mistress. Knew you not me? Your worship is too great for me to know. I'm but a small timbered woman when I'm out of my apparel and dare not venture upon greatness. Do you deny me then? Know you this purse? That purse? Oh, death, has the knight served me so? Given away my favours? Stand forth. Thou, one of those for whose close lusts the plague never leaves the city, How worse than common, private, subtle harlot that doth deceive three with one feigned lip, thy husband, the world's eye, and the law's whip. Thy zeal is hot, for tis to lust and fraud, and dost not dread to make thy book thy board. Thou'rt curse enough to husband's ill-got gains, for whom the court rejects, his gold maintains. How dear and rare was freedom want to be, now few are but are by their wives copies free, and brought to such a head that now we see city and suburbs wear one livery. Tis long of those, and it like your grace, that come in upon us, and will never leave marrying of our widows till they make them all as free as their first husbands. I perceive you can shift a point well. Let me have pardon, I beseech your grace. And I'll peach them all, all the close women that are, and upon my knowledge, there's about 5,000 within the walls and the liberties. A band! They shall be sent against the Turk, infidels against infidels. I will hereafter live so modestly. I will not lie with mine own husband, nor come near a man in the way of honesty. I'll be her warrant, my lord. (laughs) You are deceived. You think you're still a justice. But worse than I was before I kneeled. I am no justice now. I know I shall be some innkeeper at last. My father, tis my own father. I should have wondered else, lust being so like. Her birth was kin to mine. She may prove modest. For my sake, I beseech you, pardon her. For thy sake, I'll do more. Fidelio, hand her, and my favours on you both. Next, all that's wealth which was committed to that perjured's trust. I'm a beggar now, worse than an innkeeper! Oh, so worse than an innkeeper. Oh, it's it's awful. (laughs) Uh, I I was getting really worried during that that sequence when Phoenix started going on full misogynistic uh, male uh, stuff. But then Jeweler's wife turned it round, actually. Mm. The, 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 it was really nice. Just go, and uh, and I, I just went, okay, no, good, good. Well, uh, some really interesting stuff there. Um, that actually, yeah, she's got a point. Um, and, you know, uh, and and she uh, she argues her corner and, and, and comes out of it fine. Um, and 
yeah no i'm few because i was i was really worried because phoenix is that kind of guy isn't he he's the mm. one who'll stand there and do that kind of speechifying and then it's sort of more for effect um and uh, again we have this sort of interesting parallel maybe this is because of you know middleton's mother's uh, uh position here uh someone who had property who had uh you know money and and who lost it because of the the the, the balance of power uh that the early modern society uh placed on property and uh, and men and and maybe that's 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 sort of echoed in the jeweler's wife as well as uh, as 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 uh the the mother uh, to Fidelio in the in the text as well. So um, yeah, and uh, I'm again I'm talking a lot. I'm I'm just I'm, I'm waiting for someone to wave. You know I'm, I'm yes Go Elizabeth. <laughs> I was just saying thinking it was good stuff that you were saying. You know I just thought you you said that you're talking a lot, but I think what you're saying is very valid and it's mm. very interesting. Oh, thank you. So that's all my po- that's my point. <laughs> okay. Uh- <laughs> <laughs> um uh, any other thoughts before we go into the final unit of action or final units of action i think we're into the final bit of this long tying up of not seen things tying up the tangle uh which is appropriate because here oh elizabeth yeah i really liked the jeweler's wife mm. i didn't think she was going to come out with anything because so far she's just being a bit pandering a bit annoying a little bit you know coy and just just she's just you know talking about her pleasure and things like that but she really comes out fighting at at this moment and i was really surprised i was like yes go women speaking up for themselves and having agency in early modern text yeah i has to be said i've been slightly on two two minds about uh, the the jeweler's wife from the from the outset of whether where her plot line is going and where she balances in the rest and and that plot line entirely uh how it balances out i think this has definitely justified it and and made mm. me feel that 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 remains i'm i'm no i'm no longer going mm, maybe maybe fill it that out maybe take that out of the the mix because this is a complicated play nope i'm very up for this now uh okay anyway uh we have tangled we- webs of plot and now we have enter tangle mad your mitimus shall not serve i'll set myself Free with a deliberandum, with a deliberandum, mark you. What's he? A god? Under your sufferance, worthy father, his harm is to himself. One that has loved vexation so much, he cannot now be rid on it. He has been so long in suits that he's law mad. A judgment, I crave a judgment, yea, nunc pro tunc, corruptione alacusis. I peeped me raven in the faiths, and I thought it'd be my solicitor. Oh, the pens prick me. And enter Quieto, who hopefully won't speak at the same time as the Duke or anyone else. And here comes he, wonder for temperance, will take the cure upon him. A blessing to this fair assembly. Away, I'll have none on it. Give me an order to querella or a testificandum, or a dispatch in twelve terms. There's a blessing, there's a blessing. You see the unbounded rage of his disease. Tis the foul fiend, my lord, has got within him. The rest are fair to this, this breeds in ink, and to that colour turns the blood possessed. For instance, now your grace shall see him dressed. <laughs> I rejoice then he's puzzled and muzzled too. He's come to a sepi corpus. Ah, good sir. This is for want of patience. That's a fool. She never saw the dogs and bears fight. A country thing. This is for lack of grace. I've other business. Not so much idle time. You never say your prayers. I'm advised by my learned counsel. The power of my charm come o'er thee. Place by degrees thy wits before thee. With silken patience here I bind thee. Not to move till I unwind thee. Yeah, is my case so muddy? Do I stick? Do I stick fast? Advocate, here's my hand. Pull, I'm made of flint. Will not help out. Alas, there's nothing in it. Oh, do you sluice the vein now? Yes, my honoured lord. Pray, let me see the issue. I therefore seek to keep it. And opens Tangle's vein over a basin. Now burst out, thou filthy stream of trouble, spite and doubt. 
Oh, an extent, a proclamation, a summons, a recognizance, attachment, an injunction, a writ, a seizure, a risk of placement, an absolution, a quietus est. You're quieter, I hope, by so much strength. Behold, my lord. This quiet out frowns ink. Tis the disease's nature, the friend's, the fiend's drink. Oh, sick, sick. Signor Plyfe is sick. Lend me thy nightcap. Oh. The balsam of a temperate brain I pour into this thirsty vein. And with this blessed oil of quiet, which is so cheap that few men buy it, thy stormy temples I allay. Thou shalt give up the devil and pray. Forsake his works, they're foul and black, and keep thee bare in purse and back. No more shalt thou in paper quarrel to dress up apes in good apparel. He throws his stock and all his flock into a swallowing gulf that sends his goose unto his fox, his lamb unto his wolf. Keep thy increase and live at peace, for war's not equal to this battle that eats but men, this men and cattle. Therefore, no more this combat choose, where he that win, wins, does always lose. And those that gain all, with this curse receive it. From fools they get it, to their sons they leave it. My sacred patience, I begin to feel I have a conscience now. Truth in my words, compassion in my heart, and above all, in my blood, peace is music. Use me how you can, you shall find me an honest, quiet man. Oh, pardon that I dare behold that face. Now I've less law, I hope I have most grace. We both admire the workman and his peace. Thus, when all hearts are tuned to honour's strings, there is no music to the choir of kings. And they all lived happily ever after. Uh, so, uh, Tangle having entangled, uh, basically... Uh, that he gets bled on, tied up, bled on stage, uh, appears to be bleeding ink, um, and is given an, some kind of medicine, um, either intravenously or, 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 or uh, whatever, and, and recovers at the end. And anyone who's uh, also seen a show called The Arraignment by Ben Johnson will be feeling, this seems familiar. Um, I'm, I'm fairly certain Arraignment comes before this one, but I could be wrong on the timeline. Um, uh, so that, um, yeah, this is a much less extreme version of vomiting out words. Uh, mm. But even so, it's still quite a nice image of the bleeding uh, ink. Uh, I, I think that's quite a nice little little bit of business. And, and it's yeah, it's it, it's it's Tangle's got a really interesting journey in this play. I'm quite interested in Tangle because Tangle got this interesting set piece earlier with the sword fighting uh, law terms. Um, and again, by having this progression into a sort of legal mad he's law mad um i i i that's fascinating and then to, to i say to close on this not to close with phoenix doing a censorious speech when I mean, he gets a few you know what three lines to close the play off uh or you know or the duke or or anything else they just have this moment with quieto coming on and acting i mean who is quieto really who is he I mean, apart from a plot device. Alan? Uh... I just wonder whether he's almost related to the Everyman character that we get in sort of the much earlier morality plays. It's interesting. But I, I'm, yeah. I'm not convinced that Tangle's actually medicated. I think the whole point of this is almost a promotional video for, for the benefits of bleeding. Well, no, he does say the... Which was, of course, the... a, a standard... Well, he's got the balsam of a temperate brain I pour into this thirsty vein. So he, he's definitely he's administering something there the, 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 that suggests uh, having bled him, uh, taken the, the humour out, he's going to put something in. Um, so it does seem like it's an intravenous injection of some description, but um, it doesn't have to be. Would, would that not be anachronistic? I didn't think they had that at the time. I don't know. That's one for the history of medicine people. Uh, but uh, it's... I pour into this thirsty, uh, thirsty vein. Mm. Does seem like that's what they're doing. I think. I think the technology. It's not. You know, they have some. I, I, of some I would have thought he's more likely to be going to a pint of London Ale. Mm. Well, there's no reason why not. Um, Sarah. 
Yes. Um, I. It's funny because I was trying to remember what the name of the play was that had the had the vomiting words. Um, and yes, it's the it's it's the arraignment. Um, I I'm wondering about this um, this this bloodletting. Um, I mean, I suppose the audience for this play they are likely to have some kind of knowledge about that about the fact that you know the letting of blood was a medical thing it was considered to be like a cure-all for a lot of you know conditions but I'm wondering if if you were to stage this now whether it might not be more fun to actually pinch the Johnson conceit and actually rather than having having the vein cut and the ink spurting out have him vomit him vomit up ink and and then, um, you know, he could be when he talks about the 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 balm and the oil, he could be sort of like you know massaging his temples, and you know waving incense under his nose or something, or you know doing something that a modern audience would kind of relate to more. Because I have a feeling the bloodletting might might confuse um, a contemporary audience. Oh, I don't know, maybe maybe not. But it just it's it's a weird way to end the play. Um, and I also wanted to say about Quieto, I mean, I have no idea who he is, but I think that's half the joy. Um, and if you did start the play, um, as I suggested in the previous uh, session with with a sort of, yeah, with with a sort of Vanity Fair scene with all the different characters come coming through and like coming through the street and, you know, all but all uh, involved in their own little doings and plots. You could have him come on then, right at the beginning, and sort of just stand and look around and look at everybody and then go on his way. And then he doesn't reappear till till the very end of the play. And that might be quite a fun way of kind of increasing his mystery um, and and sort of, yeah, foreshadowing this benign presence that's going to going to appear, maybe. Mm. I mean, the reason I quite like the, the 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 scene as it is is it fits quieto and the tone that he would bring into the scene. You know, it's it's a much more damping down. He's tied up. He's he's. It, whereas if we went for the arraignment, it's 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 everywhere and it's 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 quite a frantic scene. Whereas this sort of brings everything down in a way. And of course, we don't know what music might have also gone with this, or whether there are any songs in here. And it'd be quite interesting to know what happens to a play like this if there are music cues that we're missing. Uh, we only know of one music cue in the whole text, but we can infer there probably were at least four. Um, and usually there are some songs, but there's n I've, I've not found anywhere for songs, really. I was vaguely keeping an eye out for where someone might randomly burst into, into a tune. Um, but there's n really no hint um, at all. Any other thoughts about the end before we go into final thoughts for the play overall, even though quite a few people here haven't been here for the play overall? Uh, oh, no, no, less than 50 cents. It's all right. Yeah, Elizabeth. I think it does take a very strange left turn at the end. You know, it does, it goes, for, we just go from all this Duke stuff and the prince and everything, the phoenix, revealing the answers to everyone's, you know, all the plot plot devices and all all the machinations of the plot and then we just move into tangle really oddly we just kind of and i just i thought it was again i thought it was funny i thought it was like really comedic that we would suddenly have this this mad character on stage like spewing his his madness and then the quieto is some sort of doctor suddenly and mm. it's like what can quieto not do you know, because <laughs> because he just comes along and then starts letting blood on stage. Then I was wondering how they would have accomplished this, you mm. know, how this would have been accomplished live, you know, to make it look convincing. And then that got me kind of, I kind of got hung up on that, thinking that that must have been a really good um, production um, um, like stage management sort of thing, or um, yeah, it must have just been pulled off really well for for the for the play to kind of end with a bang. 
Yeah, I mean, it's it's sort of it's it's one of these destabilizing things. We do find this in other plays where you know you wrap up all the major plot points and then a su- comic subplot wanders in for a f- just the last few moments, um, and we have this little uh, a side scene. I, almost just to say, can we not do the conventional ending of and now the Duke's son is here and he will be Duke? And it's like it's like they don't want to do that. It's like the play doesn't want to do that. And I quite like that. Um, I think there's a lot of lot of give to it, and so yeah. Uh, but yeah, it is it is quite odd. I mean, uh, Tangle's journey overall is quite odd because uh, he's a very peripheral character. Actually, he could he's almost involved in the action, but a lot of the time he isn't. Um, he doesn't actually do very much in terms of anybody else, but he's he's there to sort of build this world. We've talked about world building before. Um, okay, let's go to final thoughts then. Um, uh, let's start with Lindsay. You've been here for the whole week. I know. Been here for the whole all three sessions. So you know, <laughs> talk about the play overall. <laughs> um, you you can see the whole vista of it before you. The whole vista of it. Yes. I mean, I think. Um... Yeah, there are lots of questions about how it would work in terms of um, comprehensibility and running order and that kind of thing, and whether certain scenes maybe need to move slightly in order to sort of accommodate understanding um, in the audience. I think it's very interesting. It didn't at all really go the way that I thought it was going to. Um, I think it's interesting that that you know we've got, we've got. Um, We've got Falso, who's sort of, um, you know, condemned to poverty. We've got Tangle, who's cured of his um, entanglements with legal arguments, and he vows to live a quiet life. And we have Prodotor, who, who, you know, just basically gets to get, you know, gets let off, essentially, as long as he doesn't show his face again in court. And I think it's very... Yeah, it's just it's very, very interesting. It's very interesting. I think there's some interesting things that are going on here. Tonally, I think it's it's quite varied. Um, you know, we were talking in one of the other sessions about about tonal shifts between quite dark things like sort of incest and what have you, and the selling of women. Um, you know, you know, in the way that 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 kind of contrasts with for example the uh the the weapons as law terms fight that tangle and falso have so i think it's very i think it's very interesting i mean i think i think it'd be i would like to have a second look at it i think um i think it's worth that i do think it's worth that um i think that's probably all i've got cool uh greg any final thoughts yeah, it's been. An, I'm just glad that no poor actor has ever had to play the uncle and the mountain and the niece at the same time because that was um, <laughs> and that glorious maid. Um, <laughs> uh, I was I was just thinking, just as a silly sort of side of it, if you could almost end the play where the print um, just before that. And have a mock curtain call, and then just suddenly out of the back, come almost like an interruption of that. Just a bit of fun, just to sort of play with the audience, because if an audience knows it's Jacobean and um, side of things, they'll know. Or any period, they'll know that you know the the prince saying something pompous. Yes, interesting play. Really like this one. It's been fun. To- yeah, it's 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 it has been re- re- really interesting. I've really engaged. It's 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 just a, it's destabilizing me in very interesting ways, and I'm 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 fascinated about the potential of that. Uh, Alan, any final thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I think there's elements in here which look as if they were written possibly for specific actors or members of the company. Um, you know, you you've got Falso and Tangle who had obviously got a little bit of expertise in sword fighting. You've got um, one or two of the other double acts where it looked almost like, yeah, we know that that so-and-so can do this type of role and get away with it. Um, Overall, it it had a feeling that it was, yeah, okay, we, we know these types of scenes work. Let's try and just put them together into a 
a hole. Well, I, I, I might have gone with that earlier in the week. I'm, I'm not so sure now um, <coughs> because, it, uh, I, I, with the exception of the sword, the sword fencing, the law scene, which was almost entirely detachable and had very little to do with anything, um, all of the set pieces are are plot driving set pieces. They're all they're all engaged. They are episodic, but they're not detachable things, and they don't necessarily speak to specific skill sets uh, uh say with the exception of the one which requires fencing slash law and lots of latin and things uh, to know what the hell's going on um because as i say episodicness doesn't doesn't automatically mean uh sort of detachability uh, in that sense um it's it's actually quite well structured um uh, it, it's just the way he puts the exposition at the end after the thing that's happened well, yeah. <laughs> it's just, just so weird uh elizabeth you've only been here for this session any final thoughts yeah i thoroughly enjoyed this this little section of the play i really i'm going to go back and read the rest um i i loved it actually i always feel like this type of play i associate with lily like a kind of play that i can kind of put my 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 blanket on and then just settle down and really just like fall into the world of the play. And I always feel I always feel like Lily is my favorite, the one that does this. But I think Middleton has some uniqueness to to him too that I have maybe overlooked. And I, I really like this and I hope we do more. Um if there is more. Mm. Because um I really enjoyed it. I I really did. Yeah, I mean it's 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 doing you know what a lot of the other uh, boy boy companies of the time are doing you know what marston's doing with boys to a degree a bit of ben uh johnson in there as well um and yeah l feeding off some of that lily lily energy from from earlier um uh perhaps in there as well aliki you also have joined us for this 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 session uh any final thoughts um very much like elizabeth i was absolutely charmed by this little bit uh and I was charmed by these tantalizing hints of narrative strategies that we don't run up into a lot. And, and I wish I'd seen the rest. It sounds like you're saying that he does this a lot in this play, where you don't really know what's happening until after the scene has happened. Um, but, you know, coming at it from a uh, 21st century, ooh, look at all the puzzle boxes on television all the time. I don't find that off-putting. I find it fascinating, and, and I want to see how it worked throughout the whole play. So here's another vote for second look for this, please. Mm. Well, it's 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 relatively practical for us for a second look as well, which is quite nice, because that, though it has, a it, on paper, a large cast, actually they're very rarely all on stage at the same time. So it is... Uh, it's it's a, one of those ones. It's also not excessively long, uh, though it is long-ish uh, for us to do in one go. Um, so it's it's within the re bounds of possibility. Uh, Sarah, any final thoughts? Really enjoyed it. Um, I found the end a bit of a conundrum, but I kind of like that. I like the fact that it ends the way it does. It's it's it's. In terms of, because you know, I'm always thinking about how you'd stage things. Um, yeah, it would present, it would present the director with challenges, but I think they are enjoyable challenges. Um, and yeah, I really like Aliki. I really like the structure, um, the the fact that yeah, you you really had no clue what was going on, and then all of a sudden, ah, oh, okay, that's what's going on. I mean. It was it was very deftly done. Um, I loved all the interweaving of the different characters. I, it didn't really feel like a boys' play for me, and not just because of the lack of singing. It just felt really sophisticated. Um, and we talked earlier in the week about it having a sort of almost a Dickensian vibe, and it was just yeah. I I I felt that it was sort of. Um, yeah, it's just this teeming world brought to life on stage. And I think if you had the budget, I think you could do an absolutely glorious production of this that would be, yeah, 
really enjoyable for the audience. Mm. Well, going forward, we will definitely be encountering some more plays along this kind of lines from Middleton, uh, as well as others. Uh, more for, uh, for the same company, uh, Children of Paul's. Um, maybe not in our immediate future, but relatively soon coming up. So, uh, yeah, we will get there will be more and uh, potentially even better, uh, dare I say, um, uh, uh, as, as this uh, this guy uh, learns his craft because, you know, he's still uh, uh, relatively new to the the business at this stage, as far as we know. Um, and uh, yeah, there's a there's a lot of stuff to to come up and some 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 favorites as well as uh, some other uh, lesser known ones. Uh, so, um, well, uh, that brings us to the end of our time with uh, with this um this text um so all that remains is thank all our wonderful readers for all their wonderful reading thank you very much and goodbye by so much dregs <laughs>